the state mirrors, bro, they make sure they form a relationship that keeps them that way. <laughs> okay, that, 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 because you, might, you just might slip and feel good. Yeah. So you gotta make sure you got somebody you go into partnership with that'll make sure you feel bad. Right. Or when you decide that you're gonna love yourself and know the love that you are, you find yourself being contracted to people who are gonna remind you about your innocence and your power and your beauty. It all depends on how you wanna feel, who you choose to go out with who you choose to spend your time with. Because you know your friends. You know the friends to go to when you want to feel guilty, and you know the ones to go to when you want to feel innocent. Right? Right. We, we know who to call. Sure. Who you gonna call? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, the ego buster. <laughs> yeah, you want to call the fear buster. That's right. So a whole lot of choice to abandon all ideas of glorifying the separated self and to let the world be what it is will begin the transformation. This requires the first unification. So what is the first unification? It's the unification of your mind and your heart. So sometimes if your mind is over here and your heart is over here, that's when you feel the most conflict. Have you ever had that experience of having your thoughts in one place but your heart is in another place? Oh, yeah. So after which the unification of your mind and your heart, then you have the unification with God, which is the unification with the Creator, which is the unification with love. And so that's going to naturally be returned to your awareness. But this unification returns you to the Christ in you, which is simply the real self in you, the one man united with God that you've never left. So your real self is the one man united with love. Who you really are is always united with love, and it always knows it's united with love. And so as you begin to join your mind and your heart, when you do the things that you can get your heart into, when you are following your heart, when you are following the energy, you become to recognize again your oneness with the love that you are and okay. the truth that you are. Mm -hmm. So I want to get my heart and my mind unified. Mm -hmm. I want a unified heart and mind. It's time for a unified heart and mind. Are you willing to have a unified heart? Yes. Are you willing to have a unified mind? Mm -hmm. Well, creation's power then returns to you to help all the separated ones remember union. So you want to have the power of creation returning to you. You want that power to extend and create and transform your experience return to you. We were just told in one paragraph how to have that power and that love return to us. How? Well, the first thing to do is realize, see, I'm in this thing right here so that I can learn what love and joy and happiness is. The easiest way for me to do it is to stop focusing on my little separate self to the exclusion of recognizing my oneness with you and then to understand I need to let you all be. Then I need to join my own mind with my heart and stop being in conflict with myself and really doing what I really want instead of what I think I should do. Most people are behaving as they think they should without really wanting to. And whenever you behave as you think you should without really wanting to, you actually increase <coughs> fear and conflict and you make fear and conflict in your life. So if you're full of a lot of fear and conflict in your life right now, you're either doing something that you don't want to do over and over and over again, or you act in the way you think you should without really wanting to. And if you do either one of those things, it would bring fear and conflict into your life. And it would make you feel like you're being coerced. And before you know it, you're going off on somebody. So if you're doing something that you don't want to do all the time, you're right on the edge of going off all the time. <laughs> And if you're behaving as you think you should without really wanting to, you're making fear and conflict in your life. So you have to join your mind with your heart in order to become unified. When you become unified, you remember that you are linked to God, which is love, and all of a sudden you realize, my God, I am the one creating this reality, and I can change my reality by changing my mind. It's my consciousness that's creating everything that's happening to me and nobody outside of me, because there is nobody outside of me, because everything is me. All of you are me. I am you. We are one. Doesn't look like it. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but that doesn't change it from being the truth. And I'm glad we are, because that means I'm not alone. And if I'm not alone, then I never have to be afraid all the time. Yeah. I try to keep everything simple in life. I don't believe in doing heavy classes. <laughs> Any questions about anything that you've heard so far? So if I ask you, if you're in fear and conflict in some way, and I ask you, why do you think you're going through fear and conflict right now based on what we just said, what would you say? I'm trying to do something I think I should, but I have a question. Sure. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. If I'm doing something that I think I should, because I think what I should do is be doing something that's supposed to be taking care of me. Right. That's screwing me up. Right. It's, only screw, it's screwing you up only in the sense that ultimately what all of us are going to learn is that we're sustained by that which created us. We don't have to take care of ourselves. 
it's we have to allow self to take care of us. Wow. We're trying to take care. We're trying to teach ourselves. And the truth teaches we should let ourself teach us. You see, the one that's sitting in the chair is the one that doesn't know what's going to happen an hour from now. <laughs> I'll tell you again, the one that's sitting in the chair that's trying to figure everything out and, and predict what's going to happen, that self doesn't know what's going to happen an hour from now. So that's what we make plans for. We make plans so that we won't freak out with fear because through plans we can pretend we really know what's going to happen and what's that's going so on because it would do, be too frightening if you didn't have your plan. Even though, if you would be honest with yourself, no plan that you've ever had has ever turned out exactly the way you planned. But we try to overlook that so that we don't you know because it's even more frightening not to have a plan. So I'm not asking you not to have a plan. I'm just telling you that the reason why you have one is because you've lost sight of the fact that that which created you will take care of you. So now you think you have to take care of yourself. And so since we have forgotten that we're connected to source, now we're busy doing stuff that we think we don't like sometimes because we're trying to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Does, that, does everybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, same, the same thing that created the cow created the grass, mm -hmm. that feeds the cow. They were, both, they were both created at the same thing, same time. Same time. We're the ones who decided that that which created us didn't also create that which would sustain us. We're the ones who forgot that we didn't create ourselves. So that creates fear, because now I'm on my own in competition with everybody around me trying to get a part of a limited pie. Right. And so that's where all the fear comes from between us and the suspicion that comes from between us, because we've lost sight of the unlimited abundance that surrounds us at all times. Then all we have to do is ask. See, the more you wake <laughs> up, the more you realize this is an asking, gifting universe. The more you are asleep to the truth, the more you think it's all about struggle and trying to figure out how to make it. So there are two types of beings in the world. Those who believe that everything outside of them is determining what happens to them and they're trying to overcome unknown forces by getting insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and then those of us who know that we were created by something greater than ourselves and we want to tap into that intelligence and remove all the blocks to being able to, to communicate with that God, spirit, self that's within us. That is not a man, that is not a woman, that is beyond all of that and also has an idea shape of itself as that. So there are people who are following guidance and people who are making plans. The true follow and then there are guidance. people who are following guidance and there are people who are making plans. There are people who think they're taking care of themselves and there are people who know that they're being taken care of by listening and following the truth and getting in touch with their power. How, you, how, do you, how can you tell the difference between the two? How much fear do you have? How much peace do you have? And how much is your heart united with your mind? Anybody else before I go to the next part? So if, you, so if you're in conflict right now, what is the reason why a person would be experiencing fear and conflict again? Somebody was saying it right early. You had it right. What was it? If you are in fear right now in any area of your life, if you're in conflict in any area of your life, one of the reasons why you're experiencing that right now is there's something about that situation that you are doing that you don't really want to do. And in some area of that situation, you're behaving the way you think you should without really wanting to. Yeah. And there's, this is the area also where you feel the most alone. And also, this would be the area that you're most guiding yourself. Wow. So if you want to know where you're in charge, it's where you're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> where I, so most people, I'm, un, I'm unhappy in many areas of my life. That's what I'm saying. You think you're on your own in many areas of your life. So what is the most important thing that we can learn to do? To let go and to release the blocks to hearing our inner guidance. Within each and every one of us, there is guidance that we are receiving from moment to moment that would allow us to experience the joy and the power we like to experience. Why don't I hear that guidance? That's a good question. The reason why a person doesn't hear that guidance is because they listen to the voice they've made up. And so the voice of your real self, your spiritual self, is no louder than your willingness to listen to it. How can I tell if I'm listening to the voice I made up or the voice of God? Oh, good question. Well, if you're listening to the voice of the truth, for you, it would always make you feel lighter. When you're listening to the voice you've made up, it makes things seem more complicated and heavier. <coughs> Just that simple. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have any decision facing you, present the possibilities and choices to yourself and then ask yourself, does that, does that make me feel lighter or does that make me feel heavier? I'm talking about the truth for you in that moment. I'm not talking about somebody else. It might make them feel lighter. But you've got to get in touch with how am I feeling from moment to moment. That's you naming your mind and your heart. So it says, although this may sound like science fiction to you, I love that next line, 
right? Although this may sound like science fiction to you, realize that you accept much in all areas of your life from that of religion to science itself that sounds like fiction. In other words, if I had to talk to my great grandfather, no, I had to talk to my mother mm -hmm. and told her that Obama would be president, she would have said that was science fiction. You know, you know what I mean? Or my great grandfather said that I was going to, you know, catch a jet and go somewhere. That would have sound like science fiction. So I have to remember that I have to take the same attitude now, which is to be open to possibilities beyond anything I could conceive of. Just like what we are experiencing is something that's beyond possibilities that they could have conceived of. But sometimes we feel like we reach the limit. So when someone says something really powerful and unusual, we're tempted to say that's impossible. But my parents would have said there are things that are happening now that's impossible. So to really get out of a situation that you're in, ask to experience what you consider to be the impossible. And the impossible will become possible. Be willing to say, I don't really know how I can experience the kind of peace I want to experience in every part of my life. And I don't have to figure it out. That way you allow the universe and spirit to come to your aid. In other words, there's a lot of power in saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Because I don't know opens up all possibilities for things and ways for things to get to you. I know is conclusionary, so therefore you exclude anything outside of what you think you know. So things could, that could help you, you would never let in because it's outside of what you know to be true. Does that make sense to everybody? So if you really want a solution, a solution is probably going to come from outside of what you think you know, because it's what you think you know that's creating the situation that you wish would change. <laughs> so you want to always be open to a solution you didn't think of. How can I get a solution to this situation that I didn't think of? How can I unite my mind and my heart? How can I join with each and every one of you and let go of the idea of being separate from you? How can I stop acting and doing things that I don't want to do 